Hello guys, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I'm working as Senior Solution Consultant in Episero. In this session, let us uh, discuss about these uh, tips and tricks uh, in MuleSoft. So the first one is how to ignore few immune test cases. So I have created a simple application uh, where we have two flows. And um, so let, I mean, we know, right, uh, right. I mean, in order to create a immune test case, just right click emulated create blank test for this flow so once this is done for both these two applications you'll get uh, test cases like this so that you can observe in the source test emulate so once this is done right you can execute the emulate test suit okay so for example if i run this emulate suit so what happens both these test cases will run and you'll see um, because these are very small flows right you'll see 100 percentage immunity coverage achieved okay but if at all for some reason or uh, if some test case is resulting into an error and still even though you exclude that uh, uh, you have already achieved 80 percentage or 80 plus percentage so and you you want to ignore that test case so what you can do uh, you can ignore that by using an option but before that let us see this so you see as we have uh, ran the immunity test suit for the two test cases both of them got executed and if you see this uh, flow uh, i mean all these uh, process uh, operations got covered okay now you see overall coverage is 80 percentage and if you click on this you will see uh, in a detailed manner like this now, for example, if I want to, uh, uh, what do you say, ignore some test case. So you just have to select this and go to ignore test and instead of false, which is a default value, you have to set it as true. So now you see, uh, we got some uh, mark or impression like that it is ignored. Now, if you run this emulate test suit, uh, so you'll see that uh, out of two test cases, one will be, one is ignored. And the other got uh, executed so you'll see that here so this is how you can uh, uh, what do you say ignore uh, any number of test cases uh, in the eminent uh, test suit okay so let us see this and we'll go for the next tip so you see out of two right uh, uh, within brackets you could see one got it one one was ignored and whatever is ignored you could see in this color and whatever got uh, uh, executed properly so you could uh, see like this and you see the coverage got reduced from 100 to 33.33 percentage okay so this is how you can uh, ignore few test cases in your immune test suit so we are done with this now let's go to the second uh, tip that is how to check the logs of any point schedule so that this is nothing but for example, uh, let's say we have uh, generally we'll deploy this application, right? For example, if I deploy this application, uh, the logs will get generated, right? For example, if you uh, clear the console or uh, I mean, if you have uh, closed this any point studio and still you want the previous logs, how can you do that? So in order to do that, right? I mean, in order to fetch those logs, right? So we still have an option because all these logs they are just getting displayed in this console but they are actually uh, getting stored somewhere uh, in the background okay so i have used scheduler so that's the reason you could see this so let me stop this application let me clear the console now in order to check the logs that are related to uh, this particular application right uh, first of all you have to go to your any point studio where exactly it was installed so i have installed this in c drive and inside this you have to go to plugins and so here my application uh, you know i have created it on 4.4 uh, runtime okay you could see that here uh, okay so now we have to open a folder that is related to 4.4 4.4.0 uh, runtime okay so this is the folder and inside this you have to click on mule and then click on logs so you see here uh, 
tips and tricks uh, that is one mule application and yeah you, you could see that the latest logs right so if you have observed right uh, uh, the, the scheduler is uh, got invoked it got invoked and uh, you could see the logs uh, right before we have terminated the application so this way you can see the logs for each and every application and uh, i guess uh, we can also verify the previous uh, uh, logs as well okay so this is one more thing like uh, so what happens uh, there should be some limit right so uh, i mean the limit on the memory of this uh, log file so that depends upon uh, this particular thing for so within source main resources you could see log4j2.xml so here uh, you could see this appended right whatever i'm selecting here so this is the file name and the path so that is the reason uh, mule home and file separator logs file separator and uh, tips dot tips and tricks dot log right so you could see uh, this is the uh, what do you say the expansion for this particular uh, uh, configuration okay and at last you could see tips and tricks dot log and that is what you could see here so likewise uh, uh, i mean you can find the logs for any of the applications that are there in the different workspaces as well because this is the common point right uh, for all the workspaces and for all the mule applications for example now if you have one more mule runtime right uh, so you have to let's say i have one more mule runtime that is 4.3.0 so then you, you have to uh, check the logs of uh, the mule applications which is run, uh, using uh, 4.3.0 in the corresponding folder not in this particular folder okay so yeah uh, so according to this configuration uh, i mean the logs are getting stored in that uh, file location and you see uh, the the maximum size uh, um, a file can have is of 10 mb so what happens whenever um, a file attains 10 mb uh, okay so you see here somewhere one file one log file got uh, i mean it was uh, almost 895 kb right so if if this exceeds 10 mb then it will create one more uh, uh, log file like saying test hyphen one or test uh, underscore one that way so it all depends here so you see here test tips and tricks hyphen i so this i will increment uh, as soon as uh, that particular log file is done with its 10 mb of uh, memory okay allowed memory so we are done with the second one now how to download logs from cloud hub so as soon as you deploy your application right uh, so this is my application which i have deployed uh, very recently on, uh, okay now in order to get the logs for this application right you just have to click on the logs so this is what i'm showing you is the runtime manager and inside this uh, i mean i have two to three applications like this so you just click on this and click on logs so here in order to so now we have seen how to fetch the logs uh, though you have uh, uh, what do you say closed uh, your application or uh, any point studio so we have seen that right locally so now if at all if i want to download the logs of uh, logs from the cloud hub so you can click this and click on logs and also we have one more option that is mule log so you, you can see verify these contents and understand what is the difference between them so this way you, you you'll be able to download the logs and it looks pretty same actually so if you see here uh, uh, you see these logs are related to 12th february okay and this is the like info information okay all these things uh, you can see uh, so one good thing is that here i mean based upon the deployment we can download the uh, log files right so we, we are able to download the previous logs as well uh, okay so this way so now we are good with this how to download logs for uh, i mean from from cloud hub so for example if you have multiple workers right uh, so 
it will be like worker hyphen zero uh, as of now but if you have one more worker it will be like worker hyphen one worker hyphen two uh, it will be like that and you can download the logs uh, uh, for each and every worker uh, the way i have downloaded for uh, this worker zero okay now let's go ahead with this one that is runner in postman so what is the use of this so for example yeah let me try to create this from the scratch okay so let me delete this yeah delete it now in order to create a runner right first click on run you have to click this but before that let's create some uh, collection uh, so we have let's say the collection name itself is new collection and here you can create uh, one request so mm, one second now add a request yes so for example now if i want to hit my uh, application that got deployed in local let's say so this is a request right um, okay let me remove this anyway we will not get this as an acknowledgement or a response to the postman so let me just deploy this i guess this will result into an error one second guys so if i delete this then we are good okay so now let, let's say my agenda is to hit this application okay so for example what if uh, we have to send some continuous requests to the same application right you cannot can simply for example if you have to send 150 requests 200 requests for every one second for example you cannot simply manually click on send uh, for 100 or 150 times right that's not possible or you cannot keep the track of the count so in that case what we can do so now we have created a collection and inside that we have created a new request so we are good with that i have saved this now uh, click on runner and once you click on the runner right uh, you can drag some collection here so once this is done uh, now what you can do how many requests you want to send uh, for example 50 and let's say i'll i'll give something like one one second as a a delay f uh, from each and every hit okay so um, i mean so this will help you in sending the continuous request where each and every request uh, uh, will be delayed by one second so let me run on let me click on run new collection so i hope this is up and running click on uh, run new collection uh one second guys what happened so um where is the runner click on runner let's say it is 10 requests and i'll keep it as thousand milliseconds okay now let me drop this collection inside this so we are good with this right and uh, click on run new collection oh my god yes it's uh, running in the background but uh, yeah i did not verify that um, yes okay it's done right it's not going ahead uh, anymore okay now if we select this right uh, this will be of uh, okay we got 77 but because i have terminated in between uh, i mean now let us try one more time because i have terminated uh, that in between so let me keep it as 20 and uh, 1000 milliseconds 
that is one second and I will drop this uh, collection here so let's try this and we should get 20 we should get 20 hits okay and it should stop after uh, it uh, it hits uh, it for 20 times yeah it got uh, i mean it has stopped right now if you see the count of this it should be exactly 20 yes so this way you can hit uh, an a rest service or a mule application this way for uh, i mean continuously uh, so that even i mean when you apply policies right uh, you can you can uh, use this uh, i mean if you apply sla based policy or sla based uh, rate limiting policy you, you can you can um, check this way and see if it is working properly or not okay now the last and final thing is that how to re remove uh, indentation okay so for example i have two examples here so i will share this link to you so how to remove this how to remove uh, indentation from uh, either json file or xml file so for example let's say you have a payload like this but in order to save memory uh, in some instances say let's say the target system cannot accept a payload more than something like uh, 2kb i'm just giving an example or 20kb or not more than 1mb for example so instead of sending this way so this will consume more memory right because you have i mean these spaces um, right so a lot of uh, space we have here so this if you save this file it will take more memory but if you save this file it will take very less memory right uh, i mean the whole thing whatever you kept in this in 16 lines you have you can keep that in uh, just i mean as an example you can keep that in four four lines itself so for that right you, you just have to keep this uh, writer property so they they call it as a uh, writer property even in the documentation you could see writer properties for json so if you uh, configure it as indent uh, as false it will be like this if, if you don't want you can remove this thing completely or you can set it to true so that uh, uh, I mean you could see the difference right so that so the same thing can be applied to the XML as well so in the same link uh, I mean you could see that uh, this can be also applied uh, uh, for the XML as well uh, yeah writer property for XML indent okay so you could see the example uh, like this so here we uh, you could see the XML is spanned uh, in seven lines but here you could see it is uh, it was shortened uh, to four lines by removing these extra spaces or uh, carry I mean carry written line feeds etc etc so this way you can uh, I mean reduce the mem memory of the file uh, that you are sending to the, some external system or uh, to the end user okay uh, these things are syntactically correct okay so that's why you could see uh, the out output without any issues right so these are syntactically correct okay but i mean the only thing is that we are keeping the output in uh, one line itself this is not even three lines this you are trying to put uh, this whole thing in an in a single line okay so this is one more uh, useful thing in the real time maybe so yeah this so i hope i have covered few few new things and maybe uh, most of you know a few things uh, out of this so yeah that's it from my side for this session i hope you liked it please share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for listening to my video